You know when it affects your pocketbook, I guess. The Lord is good. Well, it's about 10 till. <laughs> so everybody knows that what happens at the top of the hour, right? Amen. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Amen. Uh, the Lord is good. Amen. Brother Jesse, will we charge up here, you reckon? I believe so. I hope so. <laughs> oh, only one sermon on those batteries so far. <laughs> I'd like to ask you to take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I have preached this message at our church before, but it's been about, it's been about six and a half years. And I've even, uh, this, this sermon has not been put in print, like I have a lot of my things that I feel like are important and put them in booklets form, but we do have kind of an outline of this that we've made available just in a folded sheet that we've stuck back there in the track rack area. We may have some back there now, I don't know. But if you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, the fact is, I mentioned one of our, well, I mentioned one of our lady members, and she was one of the two people that we dedicated our last church directory phone, uh, photo album, whatever you'd like to call it, yearbook album, uh, to, and she had goals of how long she was going to be doing her business, which was hairdressing. And... Uh, I told you I honored longevity. Brenda took about as long as anybody I've ever known to do anything. So we honored her. No, the fact is, she'd been at this church consecutively for a long, long time. And uh, she, I think she really wanted to be here for a much longer time. Well, the fact is, and I'm, I want you to continue to pray with me about, about my wife's health. And pray the Lord will touch her, restore her health, and help us be here with us for a long, long time. But the fact is, though, you have to do is give one report about something like that. You realize, there again, the Lord getting your attention, letting you know your days are numbered. And He can take you home at any time. I guarantee to live to 70. You may live much longer than that. We've got people much older than that here in this auditorium. But there's also been people die that went to this church before they were hit 70. And so, uh, I, what, whatever age I get to live to, I would really like to finish well. We had uh, Brother Brent, his family, come into our church from Michigan. And I remember you saying that more than once, Brother Brent, texts and emails and things to me. You know, they wanted to finish well. They wanted to, wanted to be where God wanted them to be. They didn't want to waste his life Amen. By, by not being in a good church. Uh, been in the right kind of ministry. Those are the kind of things that come to mind as I get ready to bring this message. If you have 2 Timothy chapter 4, oh, I forgot Brother Brent supposed to be doing it. Brother Brent, you got to help me out. When uh, when we get done with that choir special, if you can be ready, you can stay up here. Yes, sir. Come on up here. Did y'all like him reading the scriptures in the last couple of services? Come on up here, my brother. I've already told him where it turned to. You tell him again. <laughs> Brother, I love you. And I thank God. Thank God for you both. God bless you. I'm very happy to be in this church. Amen. Amen. Turn that back. Amen. Turn that off. All right. Second Timothy chapter 4. Let's all stand together in reverence for the reading of the scriptures. <laughs> We're going to begin there in verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. 
Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to uh, Dalmatia. And we'll find the pastor's text in verse 7. And it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for these rich scriptures this morning. Amen. It's dear to my own heart, Lord, and how maybe sometimes we don't finish well, or sometimes we don't start well, but we thank you that we can finish well. Amen. And Lord, in here tonight, help us to focus on what you have for us this morning. No matter what our history may be, no matter what we've done, we thank you for your mercy. Amen. We thank you that your grace is greater than our sin. Amen. Lord, we ask that you would help us now to be encouraged to, Amen. Lord, give us a zeal, a hunger, a thirst Amen. to be able to finish well and to be Amen. found faithful. Lord, perhaps Amen. we hear those words, well Amen. done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Father, use pastor this morning to help us to draw closer to you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated? <laughs> I promise you God's got to help me as my as my help is in the hospital but my real help is above Amen. Amen. some people refer to heaven as a new Jerusalem new Jerusalem is going to come out of heaven but my, our hope is in heaven and God the creator of heaven and earth So I forgot you, but I don't, it's not that I don't appreciate you, Brother Brent. God bless you. We'll get in the habit. Thank God for the folk in our church. I just hope I got the right version of the Bible up here this morning. <laughs> I threw some folks off one time when my wife had bought me a Bible. I said, I told them, I said, I got a new King James version. <laughs> uh -oh. There's a separate version called the New King right. James Version. It is not the King James Bible. Right. Right. And so if you go down to the Christian bookstore, be careful. Tell them you want the regular King James Version. Because if you ask them, I mean, I could see this happening. I could see a, a new convert saying, I need a Bible. My preacher said, I need a King James Bible. And I could see it going in there and they say, well, do you want a new King James Version? And, and I could... Uh, I almost took that <laughs> because of who it is. And you folks would put up with it, but I'm not going to risk it. But I can see somebody saying, I want a King James Version. The preacher said, I need a King James Bible. And they say, well, do you want a new King James Version? Well, what would you say? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'd say, this is not a trick store, is it? <laughs> right. I didn't come for a used King James Version. <laughs> Of course I want a new King James Version. <laughs> but the old King James Version is what we believe here at Glenwood Baptist Church. Amen. And it uh, doesn't need to be revised, just needs to be reread. Right. And let it go through you again, you go through it again. And I've been reading it a long time, I don't understand it all. And uh, I enjoy having somebody read the scripture here so I can learn how to pronounce some of these words. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't even pronounce it all, let alone, let alone understand it all. But, but I, like, I like this text verse. I can understand that. Toward the end of his ministry, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. In one sense, he was saying, Timothy, I've taught you now. Go do it. I'm done. I've done what I can do. You do it now. And folks, that's what I want to talk to you about is you stay with it Amen. until it's done. Amen. Paul wasn't sinless, but it does appear that he served the Lord 
from the day that he was saved to the day that he died. I believe that's the pattern that you and I ought to follow. Amen. Is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I don't believe we should accept it as normal for Christians to spend months or years not attending church. I hope that this message will be used from the Lord to encourage you from this point, don't, don't, don't let the devil get you down about the past. Okay? The thrust of this message is for you to be encouraged if you're saved from this point to stay faithful to the Lord until he calls you home. And you know what? I believe you can do it. I believe you can do it. I don't believe that we should accept it as normal for Christians to just drift around visiting this church, visiting that church, and never becoming committed. Amen. I don't believe that we should accept it as normal for Christians to live like the world <clears throat> and live like unsaved people. Sadly, we live in a day of less focus and faithfulness than ever before. I am active on the Internet. A lot of danger is on the Internet, but I'm active on the Internet. And what is sad to me is, is, is in, in the places that I'm involved in, and the internet is running into people who claim to be real warriors for the faith and taking a stand for this doctrine and that doctrine. And those birds don't even attend church. Amen. Don't even go to church. Folks, um, if you want to stay on track for God, the internet is not the place to stay on track for God. <laughs> okay? You better be on track already and some other basic things that I'm going to talk to you about uh, in this message. If you're going to stay on track for God to the end of your life, like the Apostle Paul, and say, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, I have kept the faith, you're going to have to wait upstream. It's not, you're not going to be able to get in an easy boy recliner right. type of Christianity Amen. And, just, uh, and just relax your way in. Not in service. Salvation is effortless, but service involves effort. And I want to encourage you. I'm not trying to discourage you when I tell you that. You know, some people panic at the, at the word effort or the word work or the word job. But I want to encourage you, every last person in this room, don't you folks love this church? Amen. Amen. Now, every person in this room could be living for God if the, if the rapture tarries, if we're still on this earth. You could all be living for God 20 years from now and be just as faithful or more so. And you would know more about the scriptures. You would know more from personal experience about the Lord, and not only about him, but how he deals with you, and deals with things, and deals with people. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I'm thankful for every day of life. But even though I feel relatively healthy for my age, I know that at any time, God can say, come on home. And it could be any means. It could be a stroke. It could be a heart attack. It could be an automobile accident. I was out in traffic this week, and, and first time I've been attacked by, two, by, by a pedestrian. I was out in traffic this week and here in town, and wasn't driving very fast at all. Just come up to a come up to a stop sign, and got ready to turn right, and there was a guy uh, walking across the road right in front of me on the corner. And when I realized he was there, I pressed on the brakes and waited. And he looked at me, and I waited. And he kind of backed up a little bit. So I pulled on the round, come around in front of him. And I come around in front of him, gave me a slap on the back of my car. I almost had road rage. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But you could have an accident at any time, as a pedestrian or, or, uh, or as a driver. You never know when you're, going to, when you're going to die. But what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a good percentage of the faithful members of Glenwood Baptist Church live faithfully for God for many years. Amen. It would be a real blessing if somebody could put that as an epitaph on your tombstone. Yeah. What is the text for our message? 
or today. I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. Title of the message, and I'm just going to kind of talk to you. The title of my message is How to Never Backslide. Amen. How to Never Backslide. And I'm, ta I'm not talking about never messing up. I'm not talking about you never losing your temper. I'm not talking about you skipping a day of your Bible reading, uh, not going soul winning one week, you know, <laughs> out of a year, 52 weeks. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about as a Christian being in church. If you claim to be saved and you have no stability to your life, most people are not going to really believe it. Right. They're not going to really believe that you're saved. Okay? The secret to success in the Bible is stability. Jacob said to Reuben, he said, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. And that's the secret is to excellence is being stable and just sticking with it. That's Genesis 49, verse 4. In the New Testament, the big requirement for you and me as stewards is just faithfulness. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. People talk about it, but very, very few people do it. I'm talking about being faithful. The Bible says concerning faithfulness, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. I said uh, in a recent message about what the Bible says about, about money, uh, and I've said it to a number of people in this room, personally, face to face, that in these days, I mean, one of the ways you can have a heads up on just about every person that works for your company is for you to just show up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. These days, it is so hard to get faithful employees. Right. It's so hard to get people that will be there when they say they'll be there. Right. And I realize there's problems on both sides, manager side and, and worker side. I understand that. But the fact is, if you want to be helpful as an employee, be there. Amen. Just be regular, be faithful. The people who help this church the most are not the people who come in with a windfall because of inheritance from somebody. The people who help this church the most in every way are the ones who show up. Amen. Ones who show up. Amen. Now, at this point, I've been pastoring Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist churches for over 48 years. <clears throat> From my own personal study of the Bible, from experience, and from observation, I want to give you a list of several things that if you'll start doing them right now, if you'll start doing them today, I don't believe that you will ever get out of church. If you ever get out of church, you're not practicing what I'm going to give you in this message. This message could change your life, spiritually speaking, if you would just not just be a hearer, but be a doer. Amen. I simply believe as a simple Christian who is raised up in South Georgia that the simplest ways work many times better than all of your schemes about this and that. Amen. These things I'm going to give to you are not impossible goals. Some of us look at what somebody suggests for us to do and we say, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. I personally believe these are doable and they just need to be practiced. And I could take each one of these and make a sermon out of them. And I preached sermons that had to do with some of these things I'm going to mention. But all I'm going to do is just give you a list of some things. Number one, if you want to keep from backsliding, here's some things you can do away from church. Number one is spend time in the Bible every day. Amen. Spend time in the Bible every day. Now, I did not say how much time you had to spend. Uh, but spending time in the Bible every day is doable. Amen. You actually can do it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Doesn't matter. I, I didn't give you time to tell you you've got to spend three hours reading the Bible every day. I know some churches that at the first of the year, they have a goal of trying to get everybody in the church to read through the Bible that first month of the year. <laughs> read through the Bible one month. It can be done. I don't think I've ever done it. I've got a record of my reading the Bible through. I don't think I've ever read it through in a month, but it can be done. I'm not trying to put that burden on you. All I'm trying to get you to do 
is never fast from the Word of God. Amen. Never deliberately stay away from the Bible even a single day. Amen. Don't let a day go by without you letting God speak to you. Amen. I've used it before. Somebody says, I want God to speak to me. The answer is, read your Bible. And the first one said, oh, I, what I mean is, I wish he'd speak to me all of it. Read it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You want to hear God speak to you out loud? Read it out loud. This is the word of God. You want to never backslide? Never neglect your Bible. That's one of the areas in which people backslide before they ever get out of church is they're not a regular Bible reader. Read your Bible every day. That's one of the keys. Read it, believe it, behave it. Job said it this way. In Job 23, 12, he said, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Hey, folks, how many days do you skip eating? Some of you may have a discipline of fasting, but how many of you speak, skip a day eating? Not by choice. <laughs> Make a plan every day to read the Bible. And we've got helpful materials on the table in the foyer to help you if you want to. Have a schedule of reading the Bible all the way through from front to back in a year's time. Amen. You can do it if you can read. If you can read like a normal average reader, it won't take you 15 minutes a day. To read the Bible all the way through from front to back in one year. Amen. Folks, that's doable. Think of what you do in 15 minutes. No telling what you could do if you just decided to make it a priority. Number two, if you want to keep from ever backsliding, seek God in prayer every day. Amen. Don't let one day go by that God hasn't spoken to you by you reading the Bible. Don't let one day go by that you haven't spoken to God. Amen. <laughs> In prayer. Amen. Psalm 27, 8 says, When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek? And in Luke 18, 1, the Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Folks, we need to pray. Amen. We need to do more prayer. Amen. May be some things you can cut out on, but you don't even cut out on your prayer. You need to pray more. I've never met anybody that said, you know what, preacher, I, my life is out of balance. I think I've been praying too much. <laughs> I've been preaching for a long time. I've never had anybody come up to me and say, Pastor, you've got to pray with me about this. <clears throat> my life's gone, gone all out of whack. I've, I've got so overwhelmed in this thing. I've I'm, I'm been this bad habit of praying too much. <laughs> never had that said to me one time. But the truth is, if I were to take a poll in this room, there are people in this room who believe they need to pray more. Amen. There are people in this room who believe that, that we need to get on our knees more often. Amen. Pray faithfully. Pray fervently. Pray frequently. Number three, if you don't keep from backsliding, number one is spend time in the Bible every day. Number two, Amen. seek the Lord in prayer every day. Number three, speak to people about the Lord every day. Yeah. Reading the Bible is God speaking to you. Praying is you speaking to God. Amen. Witnessing is you speaking for the Lord, for God, to people. I hope this applies in practice for you. Amen. Romans 10, 11 says, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him, finish it, shall not be ashamed. Amen. You need to speak up. Tell somebody about the Savior every day. Take tracks wherever you go. Did you like to cover that book? I like to cover that book. It was designed by the guy who did our track. Yeah. Amen. These are not, we did not get these made up by a guy who's got graphic skills so that you could put them on a shelf at your house and look at it. So, boy, that looks good. Okay. <laughs> these good looking tracks were produced so that you'd give them to somebody who might say, I think I'll read that. Amen. That's interesting. Team up with somebody at least once a week. We have an organized soul winning time here. We meet every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, 10 to noon. And I thank the Lord for the faithful people who show up here every Saturday. It's really great. If you've never been a part of it, you ought to come try it. 
this Saturday. But regardless of when you do it, team up with somebody every week. Go. Number four, if you want to never backslide. Now, here's some things that you have to kind of practice at church. Those are th three things that you can practice in your individual life at the house, out in public. But number four, if you want to keep from ever backsliding, belong to the right church. Amen. I don't believe you ought to go to the church of your choice. I believe you ought to go to the church of God's choice. Amen. Pay the price for whatever it takes to, to, to go to it. The Bible says when Saul was come to Jerusalem in Acts 9, 26, he is saved. That word means try, he attempted. He is saved to join himself to the disciples. Of course, it says they were all afraid of him, believe not that he was a disciple because he'd been killing Christians, torturing Christians, compelling them to blaspheme. But guess what? When he left and went to another town, he went to join the disciples in that town. Right. Yeah. Folks, you need to have a church home. God has got a support group for you. Yeah. Everybody believes in support groups, right? Yeah. You ever tried to quit something? It's mm -hmm. good to have somebody helping you. It's good to have somebody encouraging you. Um, I, have, uh, I have joined the a society of people that need to quit losing their temper. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I got a bunch of people in here that probably give candidates for membership if you want to ask how to join. <laughs> Everybody knows what support groups are. You want to lose weight, you want to get in shape, whatever. You know, you want to learn how to handle money, whatever. You, you get into a support group. If you want to improve your skills in anything, you get into a support group. If you want to live for God, get into God's choice of a church. Amen. Find the church that God's got for you. And there's not a perfect church on this planet. But I guarantee you, God's got a church for you. Amen. That if you get into it, you can be helped. Amen. You can learn the Bible, and you can learn to practice the Bible, and you can get a balanced Christian life if you get in the right kind of church. Amen. God has got a support group for you, and God has got a shepherd for you. Amen. Now, we all know the Lord is the chief shepherd, right? When Peter told the, uh, the shepherds, the elders, elder, pastor, bishop, are all synonymous, when he was talking to them in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, he told them, I want you to feed the flock of God. He said, I want you to take the oversight of the flock of God. And he said, when the chief shepherd shall appear. He said, he's got a crown for you. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Amen. But he's, the chief shepherd has got some not so chief shepherds. Yeah. <laughs> some people refer to them as under shepherds. But that's all a pastor means. The word pastor just simply means shepherd. It's a, it's a shepherd and sheep, shepherd and flock relationship. Amen. If you're not a member of a church, you don't have a support group, and you don't have a shepherd. And I believe God's got those for you. Next, if you want to keep from ever backsliding, now that's outside of your daily life, belong to the right kind of church. Next, be present at every service. Amen. The more you come to the right church, the better off you're going to be. Somebody recently responded at, a, at an invitation saying, Preacher, and, and his prayer request and his goal was, was to try to get closer to church so he could be more faithful in church. And I promise you, that would be one of the ingredients of not backsliding. If you ever really, really backslide, I mean, it's possible for a Christian to really mess up. Yeah. It's possible for a Christian to really go downhill. Yeah. And one of the things that's probably going to be involved is you're going to eventually get out of church. Then when you get out of church, you may say, Oh, I pray every day, preacher. <coughs> yeah, but I haven't seen you in six months. Where you been? Well, I've been reading my Bible. I've been talking to people about Jesus. Well, if you get them saved, where do you invite them to go? Where you go or where you don't go? Yeah, right. Hey, if you don't go to church, you can't be much of a witness because when they witnessed in the Bible, they took them to church, got them baptized. Amen. Yeah. Where are you going to take them if you don't even have a church? It's a joke to try to live for God and forsake the church. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25. Now, I've written a special permission slip for Mrs. O'Neill since she's in the hospital. <laughs> Amen. Sister Alice gets a permission slip. Amen. I don't know if you folks noticed, but look there back there on the back row. Sister Aldridge here with us. Amen. She gets a permission slip. Amen. You need to 
determine how important church is. Right. It is. It's important. And you need to declare what your intention is about church attendance to your spouse, to your children, to your parents, to your brother and sister, to your family. Anybody try to keep you out of church? Amen. Amen. Just declare it to them. Say, look, this is my this is my goal. This is my mindset. I believe God wants me to be there every time doors open. I'm going to do it if God helps. Then just dedicate yourself to it. Just dedicate yourself to not missing. All right, now, if you've got your fat seat belt fast. Amen. If you want to, never get the backslide. Here's one of the ingredients. Bring your tithes and offerings every week. Amen. Amen. Bring your tithes and offerings every week. One of our guys was kidding with me after that testimony. His, his guy in choir, he, he said, Preacher, I didn't understand that I didn't have to pay tithe to come to this church when I joined. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> now, the fact is, if you want to be a Christian, don't backslide. That's just one point. Right. It's possible to give tithes and be proud of it and hate God altogether, really. Right. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I've given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, ye seventh day of this, <laughs> upon the first day of the week, let every one of you, that's a kid with an allowance. Whoa. That's a child that has income. Anybody has income. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. The Bible says in here, Men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And I'm not going into all that, but, but the Lord takes this thing personally when you tithe. He don't need it, but he receives it of a hit. Here's, the, here's two things I'd like to leave with you about that, and I'll give you one more before we quit. Number one, learn to put God first. Amen. Don't wait until you've spent out everything and then say, I wonder if i got enough money to tithe. Right. Put God first. That's right. You write checks, write that check first. Yeah, right. If you think there's anything going to keep you from being able to go for a whole week without spending the money, get the money and put it aside first. Amen. Number two, prove God's faithfulness. Amen. Malachi chapter 3. Come on, Sister Gloria. Come up here and sing it with me. She don't Amen. sing it. She just plays piano. <laughs> but she knows what I'm talking about. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Amen. She knows how to play it. I've heard her play it. All your money, talents, time, and love. Consecrate them now upon the altar. While the Savior from above speaks Amen. sweetly. Trust in me. Try me. Prove me, saith the Lord, up hosts and see. If a blessing, unmeasured blessing, I will not pour out on thee. And he didn't get into it a whole lot, but I guarantee you that some of what that Brother Dan was talking about is it's been amazing for him to test God Amen. during the time he's been coming and tithing faithfully. And he's seen God. Right. He's proven him. Amen. That's why he's so full of joy about this particular thing right now. Finally, boy, I just knew it. Somebody's going to shout, Glory to God! <laughs> <clears throat> number seven you want to keep from ever backsliding behave away from church Amen. like you heard the Bible preach at church Amen. Amen. I hope that I hope that the word of God that is preached in this pulpit tracks you to your house Amen. Amen I hope that the word of God preached from this pulpit follows you right to your house Amen. and I don't mean to where your kid has to be the one that says, Daddy, preacher preached against that. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. I hope it's a Holy Ghost Amen. that takes the Word of God and, and says to you when you get home, what in the world are you talking like that for? You're, be you're better than that. You're saved. Amen. You should have praise coming out of your mouth, not cussing. No Christian should ever have cussing come out of his mouth, ever, at any time. Yeah. It shouldn't be in your vocabulary. 
it's one thing to hear it preached, it's another thing to practice it when you hit your thumb with a net with a hammer. Amen. Amen. You all not to cuss. You may go, ah but it's okay to shout. <laughs> Just don't cuss. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. James 1.22. I thank, I thank God for people who come to this church and they believe this is the way a church ought to be. Amen. This is old-fashioned preaching, old-fashioned singing, old-fashioned living. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. But don't leave here and not try and practice it yourself. Right. Don't just limit your old-timey Christian living and Christianity to when we meet together. If you want to keep from backsliding, try to carry this church service into your life when you leave here. Some of you have the joy of going this week and going to Publix, one of my favorite places to shop. I hope, because she's not a gossip, she won't tell me anyway, but I hope that the lady we got right here at the front that works at Publix wouldn't have to come and tell me, preacher, that one that you've got up there singing in the choir. <laughs> when he comes into public, he's got the foulest mouth in our cash register, <laughs> fussing and cussing. That ought not to be true of you. You want to keep from backsliding? Take what you hear preached at this church. And folks, when God gets on to you, go ahead and respond. Respond to the invitation. Anytime. If it's one thing in the message that God, you feel like God has gotten on to you about or helped you about, come down and, and down front. Thank Him. And if there's some changing to do, change. Rearrange your thinking. Rearrange your talking if you have to. Rearrange your doing. Maybe, maybe you need to leave here and start treating your family different. Maybe you need to leave here and start treating your neighbors different, your money different, right. your internet, your television watching, your reading, whatever it is. Rearrange it. Remember what God did in your heart when you came to this church. There are people who come here and begin under terrible conviction. And they leave here and what they like to do, they don't like to retain God in their memory. They leave here and they just go ahead and do what they want to do and try to forget what God was trying to get your attention about in this church. Yeah. Now, if you need to be saved, you need to get settled on that before you deal with any of these other things. Right. So in a moment, the invitation is going to be given. And I want to encourage you, if you're not sure you're saved, just disregard this other stuff. This is for Christians. We're talking about Christians not backsliding. We're not talking about lost people doing anything. If you're not saved, you need to trust Christ to be saved. Christ died for your sins, for the Scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day, for the Scriptures. If you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved today. Amen. Amen. You need to get that set. If you're not sure that you're saved, please, on the very first verse, come down front. We'll take a Bible. Give me a no so salvation. And if you backslid, this will be a good time. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's not talking about you getting saved again. Right. It's talking about you getting back into fellowship with God. Amen. Where you feel like Amen. you are living like a saved person. Would you stand with me, please? You're going to have it about the prayer.